All right. So look, we're going to talk today about a spirit called the spirit of legion. I want you to take out your Bibles. If you had your iPad or whatever you like to use to do your studying. And I want you to get to Mark 5. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Classic. Look, the way I got to understand this revelation once it happened, it came to me years ago when I kept on getting sick over and over again. I kept on having the flu. I would have the flu like three to five times a year. I would have chronic yeast infections, chronic bladder infections, chronic pain, noise in my mind. And I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what it was. I, when I would get sick, I'd go get um, antibiotic and then I would take the antibiotic and I, at the end of the run of the antibiotic would be sicker than I was when I first started it. When something like that happens, you know, you're dealing with a demon. Why? Because you can't medicate a demon. Hello. And I remember asking God, what is this? What is this? And I remember having a dream about my father who I at that time hadn't seen for over 20 years. He's in glory now with the Lord, but I hadn't seen him in over 20 years. And as I was in this dream, I was walking amongst a bunch of tombstones in the dream looking for my father. Well, when I woke up, I said, what is that, Lord? And he gave me the story in Mark 5 about the demoniac who was dwelling among the tombs, dwelling among the tombs. And I remember thinking, what are you trying to say to me, Lord? And he began to unpack that I was dwelling among the painful memories of my past, which was allowing the spirit of legion to afflict me. Okay, wow. I want to get back to the chat because I want you guys, as we're going to go, I'm going to ask you guys to start chatting in. What painful memories are you still dwelling among? What things do you constantly think of? Or that come back to your mind and you feel regret about it. You, you, you feel pain and worry about it. Uh, when you think of those painful memories as you're dwelling among the tombs, the, the, the things of your past, the things that should be dead but are still alive because you're still dwelling on them, thinking about them, meditating on them, hanging on to them. I want you to start chatting in. What are those things? Can you not forget the divorce that you went through? Are you still dwelling on that job? That, that you were mistreated badly at and, and you've never really totally forgiven your boss or people that you worked with. Maybe you're dwelling among the tombs because you lost your house. Maybe you lost it just last year in the pandemic, but you can't stop thinking about it. You feel condemned. You feel angry. You've gotten bitter. What tombstones are you dwelling among? Because as you're going to see in this story, when we allow ourselves to dwell on the painful memories of our past, it allows the spirit of legion to have a legal landing strip to afflict us. And as you're going to see, he, he can put chatter in your mind. He can cause sickness and disease in your body. He can cause strife and disunity in every area of your life. So here God told me that I was dwelling among the tombs. And I was like, what exactly does that mean, Lord? What exactly does that mean? And so I went to that scripture and began to look at some of the words in the scripture. And the first thing that stood out to me is when I looked up the word tombstones, the word tombs there, dwelling among the tombs. It says it three times. Night and day he was among the tombs, in the mountains and in the tombs, and he came out from among the tombs. I looked at the word tombs and it means a monument set up to cause a perpetual remembrance. That's what a memory or a trauma or a stressful situation can do to you. It actually scars your soul. It actually puts a mark or a monument, a tombstone in your soul. And it causes you, that monument that's set up in your mind, your will and your emotions, causes you to perpetually remember, to dwell on, to think about, to be impacted by that painful event that you went through in your life. Amen? That means that when we go through these traumas and these stresses, these crises in our life, if we don't immediately recognize that those things have wounded us, we can actually, it can actually set up tombstones inside of us that begin to control us, the way we think, the way we feel, the way we react to situations. You ever have somebody say something innocent to you and you just like, like they pushed your button, man. They didn't realize it, but they pushed your button. They, they triggered you and you were like, wow you flipped out on them. It's like, and afterwards you thought, why did I flip out? 
because you had that tombstone in you. You had that monument set up in you. And, and people around you don't even realize that when they talk about something that's connected to that crisis or that memory or that stressor that you went through, it triggers you off. You, you go off. You blast off. That is a sign that your soul's been wounded and that you're dwelling among the tombs. Look, I want to check the chat right now. I want to see what people are saying to me right now because I can see, wow, this is awesome. I need a miracle. This is one, one person here. It says, wow, I've listened to Legion Slayer and all your teachings 20 times or more. They're all true. Thank you, Jesus. Blessings, blessings. I'm going to read now. It says, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid. The doctors say I say I feel and see all the symptoms, but they don't know. But I know that Jesus has the last word, and I'm wa waiting for my supernatural. Uh, Kiao says marriage. Michael says, uh, Michelle says painful memories. RL says ministry memories where I felt rejected over a deliverance ministry. Felicia said she has dwelling among the tombs of bullying. Felicia said domestic violence growing up. Yes, guys, all these things. Look, work-related trauma is listed here. Verbal abuse is listed here. Um, there's all kinds. Husband cheating on me. People giving me drugs, promoting drug abuse. Having a child out of wedlock. Battle in my mind. Trying to get more faith. See, this is what I'm talking about. Every single person in the planet is dwelling on something that happened negative in their past. And what you guys don't realize is this, when we set up or allow those tombstones to be set up in our mind, will, and emotions, and we keep on dwelling on them, it allows the spirit of legion to attack us. How so? Remember the demoniac, it says that he was dwelling among the tombs. The word dwelling there means this, powers that are said to pervade, to govern, and control the soul. Did you hear that? Powers that are said to pervade, govern and control the soul when you allow tombstones memories crises stressors traumas to build tombstones in your soul then powers like legion are able to pervade to govern and control your soul amen did you hear what i said we've got to be healed of these memories we've got to be healed of the traumas and the crises in our past. Because if we're not, then Legion is able to pervade us, to govern and control us, govern the way we feel, govern the way we think, control our physical health, cause disease and disorder to be put on us. Remember the demoniac in that story. When Jesus delivered him, it said, the Bible says that he sat there clothed and in his right mind, clothed and in his right mind. What does that mean? Well, for one, that man had lost his mind. The demoniac had lost his mind. The Bible, if you read that story, it says that he came out from among the tombs and he would beat and bruise and cut himself, that he he ran naked among the tombs, that he lived there night and day among the tombs, that that he would they would try to restrain him with handcuffs and chains, and he would just break them apart. He was always screaming. He was losing his mind. You know, that spirit of legion drives people to lose their mind. He's always chattering in your mind. He will even put thoughts of death in your mind. Look, he drove the pigs in that story to kill themselves. Remember he asked Jesus, don't send us out of the region. Send us into the pigs. Jesus said, yes, they went into the pigs and the pigs lost their mind. They ran over an embankment over a cliff and killed themselves by throwing themselves over the cliff into the water and they drowned. Okay, look, if you're having thoughts of suicide, thoughts that you don't want to live anymore, thoughts that you want to give up. It could be because you've been allowing yourself to dwell among the pain of your past so much that now you've given Legion a legal landing strip to come in and drive you to want to end your life, to not want to live anymore. If that's you, chat in, because we're going to break that demonic spirit off of your life. Look, he's a chatterbox. That man, the demoniac, sat there clothed and in his right mind. He was he had been losing his mind because of Legion. Legion is a chatterbox. He talked more in the New Testament than any other demon. Remember the stuff he would say to Jesus? He'd say, oh, Jesus, what is there in common between us? 
I solemnly implore you, do, do not torment me. Oh, Jesus, don't send us out of the region. Oh, Jesus, my name is Legion, for we are many. Oh, Jesus, send us into the pigs. I mean, this demon is recorded as talking more than any other demon in the entire Bible. Do you have a noisy mind? Is your mind constantly thinking about stuff you're going through, depressions that you're fighting, that you want to give up, that you want to kill yourself, that, you know, offenses that you're holding on to, the memories that, that are making you feel ashamed and afraid, the future that's making you dread what's going to happen to me in the future. This demon is constantly putting thoughts in our mind. And people will say, listen to me, listen to me. People will say, demons can't put thoughts in your mind. That's not true. Really? Then why? Why? When Peter said to Jesus, when Jesus told all his disciples, I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to die. And Peter came and said, no, no, my Lord, that won't happen to you. No, that won't happen to you. And Jesus turned around and said, get behind me, Satan. You do not have the mind of God. He was telling Peter, look, don't tell me I don't, I'm not going to go to the cross. I'm going to the cross. That thought you heard about me not going to the cross was not from you it was not from god you do not have the mind of god meaning satan put that thought in peter's mind that's why he said get me get thee behind me satan he was trying to say peter that thought came from satan and i don't receive it get behind me satan you cannot keep on talking to peter's mind because he's going to have the mind of god but he was listening to the devil at that moment so don't let anybody tell you that demons can't speak to you because they're constantly trying to speak to you, to control you, to depress you, to cause you to be anxious and fearful. And many times they get the legal right to do it when you're dwelling among the tombs, when you're dwelling among the pain of your past. You know, I want to put this in right here. The demoniac was dwelling among the tombs. Remember the word tombs means a monument set up to cause a perpetual remembrance. And he was dwelling on those tombs. Dwelling means powers that are said to pervade, govern, and control the soul. Meaning Legion was able to control this man to make him beat and bruise and cut himself and scream and run naked among the tombs and everything else because of the monuments, the tombs, the memories, the crises, the traumas that were in his soul. Jesus said that to, to us in John 14, 30, he said the prince of this world is coming, but he's nothing in me that's in common with him. So he has no power over me. Look, when you don't have anything in you that's in common with the devil then the devil will not be able to speak into your mind. He will not be able to control you. He will not be able to manipulate you. He will not be able to make you sick. He will not be able to steal from you. That's why we got to get healed of these tombstones, these memories, these traumas in your soul that you're still dwelling on. You know, it's interesting that the very first thing that Legion ever said to Jesus was this. Let's go to Mark 5. Well, in fact, we'll put it up on the board. This is Mark 5, 7 says Jesus got out of the boat. He, he was met by the demoniac. And then here comes the demoniac. He runs towards Jesus, controlled by the spirit of Legion. Legion throws himself down on his knees in front of Jesus and says this. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? What is there in common between us? I solemnly implore you by God, do not begin to torment me. Did you see that? Remember what Jesus said, John 14, 30, the prince of this world is coming, but he's nothing in me that's in common with him, so he has no power over me. Put that scripture back up again, John 5, 7. See that? This demon legion is proving what Jesus said, that it's true. He says, look, what is there in common between us, Jesus, i.e. nothing? I implore you, do not torment me. This demon was, was probably thinking, wow, this human being, this guy named Jesus, because remember, Jesus set a, temporarily set aside his divinity to come to earth as a human being. That's Philippians. Hello. Says He probably said, wow, this guy, this guy's got, he's different than every other person I've ever met. He doesn't have anything in his soul that's in common with me. He's not dwelling among the tombs. He's not dwelling on the pain of his past. So, wow, not only can I not torment this guy, but he, he can torment me. That's why he said, what is there in common with us, Jesus? Do not torment me. Look, that's what a demon's going to say to you when you have nothing in you that's in common with him. 
Did you hear what I said? This is the key to deliverance. The key to deliverance is when you get so healed in your soul, you're not dwelling among tombs and you're not being offended and bitter and you're not dwelling on the pain of that memory that you went through and you're giving no landing strip to the enemy anymore. So you actually have authority over him now and he can't torment you. You can torment him. When I was getting sick all those years, the devil was tormenting me. Legion was tormenting me. Endlessly tormenting me because why? Remember I had the dream that I was walking among the tombstones. It's no coincidence that after I got healed of all those painful memories of my past, that I know not only never again had flu like I did, I'd have it three to five times a year. I never again had bladder infections and yeast infections. Got totally healed of those things. And my father and I were reconciled. And we were together reconciled until the day he went on to glory. It's beautiful. It's beautiful what the Lord will do when you allow him to search your soul and get you healed of the tombstones. And look, remember I said that that demoniac, he sat there clothed and in his right mind. He got his mind back. No more chatter. No more offenses, no more dwelling on those past painful memories. And he probably had even mental disorders. We can see that exhibited in the story, right? Screaming, beating, bruising, cutting himself. That's a sign of a mental disorder and a demonic torment. Okay. He was healed of all those things. You're going to be healed of bipolar disease, of a chronic depression and anxiety. Uh, uh, all those, all those mental disorders that, you know, you may have been diagnosed with, you're going to get healed of them. You're going to get healed of them because you're not dwelling among the tombs anymore because God has brought you out. Jesus has delivered you from that power of that spirit. I'm going back to the chat again. Wow. Holy Ghost fire destroying all the demons on this page. Amen. <laughs> Well, I'm seeing people and they're still chatting in, mistreated, discriminated against, threatened, emotional abuse by an employer, daughter having trauma from losing her father and three close family members, well, well, a persistent loop of, 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 of um, crises over and over again, diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, hearing voices and chatter nonstop. Gee, who is that, guys? It's the spirit of legion who is a chatterbox. Amen. And he not only is going to stop talking to your mind, but you're going to start getting healing in your physical body. That man, he sat there, the demoniac, he sat there clothed and in his right mind. Okay, so we got his mind back. Healed of disorders in his mind. Mind. Healed of the chatter in his mind. But if you look up those words, right mind, in the Greek, in the Thayers, it means this, to be healed of diseases. See, I couldn't figure out how come, if, if this is legion, how can he give me sickness in my body? You know, the, the infections, the viruses and, and the flus and all that. How can he do that? Well, I found my answer in the, in the word meaning of right mind. It means also to be healed of diseases. I've seen people be healed of edemas, of, of inflammations, of flus, of viruses, of bacterias, of COVIDs. When they got healed, of all the tombstones, the memories that they were dwelling on. Okay, so we're going into our first activation. I hope that you have been sharing this broadcast because you're not the only one that's dwelling among the tombs. The entire world right now is dwelling among the pain of their past. Even last year, 2020, how that even accentuated and magnified and intensified all of the crises and the stressors and the traumas that we've lived through. Everybody out there needs this. I need you to share the broadcast. If they haven't, if they jump on now, they can watch the rerun. They can watch the replay and do the activation as you should too. You should keep on watching these activations until you feel total peace in your soul. Amen. So now we're going to walk into, into our first activation because we're going to have two today, two major activations. Okay, how do you get healed? Look, you've got the Holy Spirit in you, and he didn't come alone. He brought power. Acts 1.8, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Okay, that word power is dunamis. One of its meanings is excellence of soul. If you've watched me, you know. 
You know what I'm talking about. Look, you've got power in you right now. And you can literally, with your decrees, with your faith, you can request and ask the Holy Spirit, you can loose him to search your soul, to find every tombstone of every negative memory, of, 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 of every time you went through a crisis or trauma, of everything you're dwelling on, the, the negative words that people said to you, the, the mean things that people did to you, the abuse that you've been through, the things that have happened to you that you can't let go of. You can release the Holy Spirit to heal you. And to, he's got literal supernatural power, dunamis power. And it can release from your inner man in and, and out into every part of your soul to completely heal you, completely heal you. Ephesians 3.16 says that Paul prayed that we'd be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power. That's doing us in our inner man. That's our soul by the Holy Spirit. Your soul needs to be strengthened. It needs to be reinforced so you don't hang on to those troubles. You don't hang on to those memories so that you can let go of those offenses, so that you can let go of, of the fear and the depression and the anxiety and the bitterness that has you gripped that are connected to those memories. Amen. The Holy Spirit's able to do that. He's able to do what Ephesians 3.16 says, that you will be strengthened and reinforced with mighty dunamis power, soul healing, excellence of soul healing power in your inner man, your mind, will, and emotions by the action of the Holy Spirit. Okay, we're going to pray. Now, as we go into pray, look, also you need to get this. This is Legion. It's the full teaching, three-disc teaching set, and it's a soaker. This soaker walks you through getting healed, okay? This you can just sit there and you can repeat after me throughout the entire six, uh, the entire soaker, 80 minutes of heavy duty, whack-a-mole, supernatural power, fire, light of Christ, Holy Spirit and Dunamis to get you healed of those things. Go to our website and get it because look, as I'm going to show you as we go, you need to get healed of these things so that you not only can have peace in your mind, divine healing in your body, but that you can walk in revival power. We're going to talk about that in a minute. All right, now, put your hand on your belly. Okay, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to meditate on who's inside of you right now. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And Christ's spirit, the Holy Spirit, resides in you right now. And there, he has power, dunamis, excellence, and soul healing power. He also is able to bring to your remembrance anything you need to get healed. You may be thinking, well, I don't really have that much. A lot of people here are saying a list. There's hundreds of chats right now of a list of things that people have gone through. Sexual immorality, dementia. Wow. Memory of having COVID. Being confused and anger, severe back pain for two years. Wow. If, you, if you're one of those people that still don't know, ask the Holy Spirit to show it to you while we're praying. Because the Holy Spirit brings to your remembrance, the Bible says, brings to your remembrance the things that Jesus has said and the things that you need to get healed. He brings them to your remembrance. So now keep your hands on your belly. You can even put one on your belly and one in your heart. And we're going to pray together. Okay, say this with me. Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I release your presence into every part of my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions. Holy Spirit, I know that I have a stick of dynamite in my spirit right now called dunamis power. I ask that excellence of soul healing dunamis power be released into every place in my soul where I'm holding on to a memory, a crisis, a trauma, a stressor, Lord God, I ask for the Holy Spirit to search out every tombstone 
in my mind, will, and emotions and to heal them, destroy them, disintegrate them, wipe them out with your dunamis power. Now listen to me. We're going to keep praying. While you have that memory in your mind that the Holy Spirit's going to work on right now, if there's someone connected to that memory that hurt you or abused you, that embarrassed you, shamed you, used you, manipulated you, cursed you, I want you to forgive them right now, even if they don't deserve it. This is part of the process of you getting a miracle. Okay, so do it right now, right where you're at. Father, we right now, we pray together right now. We forgive. Just say it with me. Say, I forgive everyone that's hurt me. Lord God, I release forgiveness and the power of your blood to cleanse away every accusation every curse, every evil word, every evil action that they said against me. And listen to me carefully, say this with me, say, and I repent for getting bitter at them and offended and critical and judgmental in Jesus' name. Now, you may be thinking, as I led you through that right there, you may be thinking, what do you mean I repent? They, they abused me. They hurt me. They wounded me. But ask yourself this question. Yes, they hurt you first. They victimized you first. They abused you first. But have you allowed yourself over the years, as you kept on dwelling among the tombs of that memory, to get bitter and offended at them? Because if you did, that's, that's supplying another legal landing strip for the enemy to control you. Say it with me again. Say, Lord, I do. I repent for being judgmental, for holding resentment, for getting bitter, for complaining, and for holding unforgiveness against them in Jesus' name. Okay, now, I know that that might be hard, but we're still doing it, okay? Keep your hand on your heart and your stomach and keep on saying this to me, with me, just say, and God, I again release the power of the Holy Spirit. Flood my soul, Holy Spirit, with dunamis power, Destroy every tombstone. See, I repent for dwelling, thinking about, and meditating on those painful memories. Holy Spirit, erase the negative effect of those memories from my soul. Thank you, Lord. Look, you're, you're getting healed right now. And you're going to know that you're healed. Because when you think about that, that situation again, you'll remember it. But you'll feel peace. You'll feel peaceful. Now, just stay right there. I'm going to pray for you now. Keep your hands on your heart and your belly. Father, in Jesus' name, I release the incomparable unlimited, surpassing power that is in and for us into everyone watching right now. The same power you used when you raised Christ from the tomb. When you raised Christ from the tomb, that power, I release it right now. Raise everyone watching from the tombs right now, Lord. Bring them out of those graves. Bring them out 
of dwelling upon those painful memories. Lord, erase their memory banks, cleanse their souls, heal them right now with your mighty power. In Jesus' name, strengthen and reinforce them with mighty dunamis power in their inner man by the Holy Spirit. I decree they're excellent of soul. Now say it with me. Say, I am excellent of soul in my mind, in my will, and in my emotions. Say, I'm healed of all tombstones in Jesus' name. Now look, if you have any, like your eyes water, or you have water drip out of your nose or down your throat, or if you feel peace or you feel cold, or you feel energy, I want you to chat it in while we're doing this. Okay. Um, wow, I'm seeing, I had multiple vision of a multiple demonic things flying out of me screaming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. See, people are already getting breakthrough. And that's only our first activation. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Praise you, Jesus. Wow. Eyes began to water and start coughing, yawning with tears. Felt peaceful. My eyes are watering. Thank you, Lord. I feel flooded by the Holy Spirit. Does crying count? Absolutely. Eyes teary. Thank you, Jesus. Crying. Eyes watering. Look, the watering is a sign, supernatural sign, that you're getting delivered of the spirit of legion, and you're being healed of those memories. Peace, eyes watering, nose, ears watering, seeing a vision. See, just released. I feel peace and no more dread. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, Katie. I feel nausea. That means you're get, about to get delivered right now. Amen. Um, I'm crying. I'm, I have watery eyes. Eyes are watering and a lot of peace. Yawning, sister. I feel heat. Yawning and cried. Watery eyes. Crying and yawning. Tears. I feel peaceable. My neck hurts bad. That means you still need more deliverance there, girl. Okay, we're working on it. Yawning. Wow, Daisy. Felt peace of the very, on the very dramatic, traumatic memories of people harming me. I feel peace. I feel light as a feather. Warm belly. This is fantastic. Glory to God. Yawning and eyes watering. No stinging and crying. Whoop, whooping on the devil in Jesus' name. Eyes are watering. Wow, my eyes are dripping and I'm not crying. See, that's... Thank you, God. Yes, these are all supernatural signs. My heart, hands feel warm. Deliverance, when you said deliverance, I can breathe better. My stomach feels like snakes are crawling there. You need more deliverance. Okay, we're, we're, we're going for the next level. I'm full of joy, teary-eyed and feeling a huge relief coming off of me. My body's on fire. Thanks, guys. Keep on chatting in. See, it's working already. That's what this means. This is dozens and dozens and dozens of reports already that it's working. Okay, now listen to me. It's so important that we get healed of the spirit of legion. And I'll tell you why. Revival is going to hit your life. Revival is going to hit your life when you get delivered of this regional spirit. Look, first of all, legion is a regional demon. Okay, Mark 5, 1. I don't know if we have time to put it on the board. But Mark 5, 1 says Jesus got out of the boat and he stepped out of the boat onto the what? Region of the Gerasenes. So where is Jesus going? He's going to a region. He's going to a region of land. Okay, and when he's gets there the first thing that meets him is a regional demon how do we know that because here's a uh, legion in verse 10 and it says this and legion kept begging jesus urgently not to send them himself and the other demons away out of that region that demon legion who is six thousand strong was put in charge by the devil to watch over in a negative dark kingdom way that region amen that region he is a regional demon what does that mean that means that he's over regions of land there's not just one legion there's legions everywhere over every region of land so if you go out on a mission and you go out on the call of god or even if you go back out to go see your parents in the state that you grew up in and all of a sudden you step into that region you get sick you're gonna know why because legion 
is over regions of land. And he's going to, as soon as you step out of the boat or the plane or the bus or whatever it is, like Jesus did, he's going to meet you there. And he's going to try to stop you from ministering the gospel of peace. He's going to try to stop you from going to your family and having a great time with your family and bringing them to Christ. He's going to try to stop you by making you sick, by attacking you. But if you have nothing in you that's in common with him, no tombstones that you're dwelling among, then he's not going to be able to stop you. And revival is going to come out, come to your family, to your life, to that region. Because you're going to have power. Now, the demoniac, I want to show you something. The demoniac, it says that he sat there clothed and in his right mind after he was delivered of the spirit of, of legion. Okay? Clothed in his right mind. Now, the people of that region, what happened is, is, is legion was on that man before he got delivered. And legion tells Jesus, don't send us out of the region because we're a regional demon assigned to this region. Send us into the pigs. So Jesus does. The pig farmers that were the those keepers of the of the hog herds were watching they flipped out and they went over to tell the people of that region what had happened and the people came back you know what they said to jesus they saw the man sat there clothed and in his right mind they saw that the pigs were dead they flipped out and they go you know what jesus leave our region why is that so important to know because it indicates that not just the demoniac had the spirit of legion on him that the whole people of that region had the spirit of legion on them. Why? Because as you remember, the one of the first things Jesus that the legion said to Jesus was, oh, Jesus, don't send us out of the region. And then the people of that region later on say, oh, Jesus, leave our region. Who's talking to Jesus both times? Legion. Through the demoniac and through the people of that region. Look. That's how these regional demons get their right to be over regions of land. The condition of people's souls in that region give them the legal landing strip to be able to control that, that region. You got to get your soul healed. Then you got to show other people how to get their soul healed so that you can take regions of land. You can take your family. You can take states. You can take countries. You can take nations. All right. Now, look, when that man, the demoniac, got healed, it says that he got healed. He sat there clothed and in his right mind. And then he asked Jesus, Jesus, let me go with you. Let me hang out with you. I want to go with you. I want to do this. I want to preach the gospel. I want to travel with you. And Jesus said, no, stay here and tell everybody what God has done for you. Well, guess what? The demoniac, who is now a man sane, clothed and in his right mind, he didn't listen. It says this. Let's look at it on the board. It's Mark 5, 20. This is what it says that he did. It says, and the man departed and began to publicly proclaim in the Decapolis, the region of the 10 cities how much Jesus had done for him and all the people were astonished and marveled. Did you see that? That guy, the demoniac was afflicted by a regional demon, a regional demon. Oh my God. This is big. This is big. He was afflicted by a regional demon. When he got delivered of the tombs he was dwelling on, he got delivered of that regional demon and he was able to be clothed. And in his right mind, the word clothed there means a mantle. He was able to receive a mantle for regional anointing. For, wow, I hope you're listening to me. For, re, for the regional anointing to be able to go into the region of the Decapolis, the 10 cities, preach the gospel, work miracles. And it says that everybody was what? Astounded and marveled. You're going to have a regional anointing. You're going to be clothed with a mantle for regional anointing when you what? Boom, get healed of the tombs you're dwelling among. You're going to have more authority and power than you ever have before. Power to take down a regional demon, to go into regions of land, to go into states and countries and, and, and all the areas that you were being called by God. And you're going to be able to preach the gospel, go into that region, and the people are going to be astonished and marvel. I'm telling you what. I went, when I went on tour in the very beginning, back in 2008, every time I'd step on a new state, I'd get attacked by Legion because he'd find some other wound or tomb that I had in common with him, and he'd go after me. He'd make me sick. He'd give me the flu. He would attack my body. But you know what? He was doing me a favor because every time he did that, he was exposing another level of hidden place in my soul where I was holding on to stresses and crises and traumas and memories and tombstones I get it healed. And now we kick his butt. We can kick his butt because I have nothing in me that's in common with him. So he has no power over me. That's where you're going right now. Look, now I'm going to confer with my team right now. I'm thinking I'm two part show because man, I got a lot more to say and I only got 10 minutes. 
All right, so look, we're going to do an activation right now. And then next week, I'm going to come back live. You need to spread the word because next week, I'm going to go into how he actually creates the storms that you're dealing with so he can get you wounded so he'll have the legal right to attack you. Okay, so now we're going to go into our next activation. Don't forget, you need to get Legion Slayer. Okay, this is the three teaching set talking all about the secrets and mysteries about how to be delivered of the spirit, what he's doing, what he's trying to stop you from achieving your destiny, your walk with God. And then the soaker, you can play this at night while you're sleeping. You can play it in your car and repeat after me all the way to work. You're going to have a miracle right in your car. You're, if you ride the bus, you can put it on your earphones. You can get healed and delivered right there in the bus to work. You know, it, wherever you're at, you can be listening to this and you can get total dominion over the spirit. Now, I want you to chat in as we go into our last activation. How many of you want that mantle for regional authority? To be able to go into any region of land and kick some devil butt and take that region for the kingdom. Amen. How many of you want the authority to go in and not only free people like the demoniac, but the rest of the people in that region? who said, oh, Jesus, leave our region because they were afflicted and controlled by the spirit of Legion too. They were dwelling among the tombs. Is it worth, let me ask you a question. Is it worth you hanging on to that memory? You know, I have a, a, a lot of people I hang out with. And as we go into this activation, I just want to tell you this quick story. Some people that I hang out with, they don't want to let go of the pain. They don't want to let go of the memories. They keep on talking and talking about this happened to me and this happened to me and this person did this to me and that person did that to me. You know what that is? That's dwelling among the tombs. When you keep on rehearsing and re-rehearsing and re-rehearsing and re-rehearsing all the stuff that you ever has happened to you without it having a good, I mean, you can talk about stuff. Don't get me wrong. You can say, you know, this and this happened to me, but I know God is going to heal me. I know God's going to fix it. In fact, I'm asking him to do it right now. That's the way you have to treat those kinds of situations. You can share your heart. You can share your pain, but you always have to share it from the perspective of God healing you, not from the perspective of you being bitter about it, angry about it, offended about it, resentful about it, and anything else. Is it worth you hanging on to that memory? Is it worth you have something to complain about? Or is it more worth it for you to get healed so that what? You can have regional authority over one of the most powerful beasts in the entire Bible, the spirit of legion, so you can whack sickness and disease off of people and so that you can be free, you can shut down the chatter, you can take the region for Christ, you can bring souls into salvation. Is that what you want or do you want to hang on to the memory? Look, I am not discounting that many of you have gone through horrible things horrible things but god wants you to take that the thing that the devil used against you crush it under your feet and move forward to where you are now taking ground for the kingdom because you are clothed with a mantle and in your right mind amen okay so now we're going to go into it and then i'm going to release the mantle amen and next week when we do this, the second part, I'm going to play you miracle footage to show you how people get healed. You're going to start walking in a miracle anointing. I'm going to show you people who got healed of the spirit of legion and their physical bodies got healed. And you are going to have that same authority. Okay, so let's pray again. Are you ready? Put your hand on your belly. No, you know what? This time I want you to put your hand on your mind, your head. Because legion is chattering in your mind. And a lot of the tombstones that you are carrying around with, that you're dwelling on, are in your mind. You can't stop thinking about the thing that happened to you. Okay, are you ready? Father, just say this after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, through the laying on of hands, through my faith, and through my decrees, I speak miracle working, dunamis power into my mind to demolish, wipe out, dissolve, disintegrate, destroy every tombstone that I'm dwelling on. Lord God, I release Holy Spirit to search my thoughts, to search 
my memory bank to penetrate deep into my mind in the name of Jesus and to hunt down and assassinate every memory, every stressor, every crisis, every trauma, and every tombstone. Lord God, I thank you that the Holy Spirit is flooding my mind with supernatural power, power to heal, power to deliver, power for breakthrough. Say, Lord God, I give the Holy Spirit full permission to not stop searching and working and hunting and healing until he finds every single tombstone in my mind. Lord God, I will not allow myself to dwell on these painful memories ever again. I will not come into agreement with the spirit of legion by dwelling among the tombs. Are you with me? Come on. Now pray in, pray in your spiritual language. And if you don't have it, just start thanking God while you lay your, keep your hands on your head. Pray in your spiritual language or just start thanking God right there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that you're healing right now. We thank you for loosing the lightnings of Christ right now. The light of Jesus Christ, the dunamis power, the fire of God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to work right now. You're going to work to hunt down those tombstones, to destroy every single negative memory. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you. We give you the honor and the glory that you are healing. You are delivering. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus. Right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, keep thanking him for like the next 30 seconds. Thank you, Lord. We give you the honor and the glory. You are healing. You're releasing power. Power. Your people will not dwell among the tombs. Your people will have power. They will have nothing in them. Say it with me. I have nothing in me that's in common with the spirit of legion. Because I'm being healed of all the tombs in the name of Jesus now, 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 in Jesus' name right now. Thank you, Lord. 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 Now just stay right there. Keep your hands on your head and I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, fire of God right now. Fire of God. Do to his power into fire of God. Light of Christ. Lightnings into their mind right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. And I speak to that spirit of legion. I say, you come out. You come out of every bad memory. You come out of the time you came in, the place you came in, and the cause that lets you in. In the name of Jesus, now. 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 In Jesus' name, now. Now, now, in the name of Jesus, now, now, now. Thank you, Lord. 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 Now, look, we only have a little bit of time. I want you to chat in if you had another level. If maybe you didn't get healed the first time. I want you to chat in. What do you have now? Do you feel power? Do you feel cold? Do you feel electricity right now? Angels are at work right now. Angels are at work right now. I just saw that right now. I thank you, Lord. 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 And and I'm going to release the mantle, but you need to chat in right now. Chat in right now. Chat in if you've had anything that any type of manifestation, eyes watering, ears, ears wet inside your ears, water coming down your throat, um, crying, anything like that, warmth, heat, electricity right now, nausea, throwing up, anything. Okay, it says, which I'm seeing, feel heat on my hands and head, hands on fire. Um, I, I started coughing. My husband started coughing really hard. A lot of heat, holy a fire. I feel holy fire breathing rapidly. A lot of heat right now, heat on my hands, fire on my hands. I feel peace right now, nose running, victory. Um, 
Um, I'm crying. Just got deliverance. I see it. It's gnawing at me. Eyes opening and watering. Back pain, foot pain are healed right now. I feel twitching my hand, tingling in my legs. I got the headache. Somebody said, call me a crazy lady. That's right, buddy. I am crazy. Crazy for Jesus Christ. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Getting eye deliverance now. In Jesus' name. Coughing, goosebumps, headache. Mind um, is quiet now. Nausea, but feeling the Holy Spirit. Coughing, eyes, peace. My neck feels better, burping, LOL, powerful, crying, tingle, belching, electricity on my body, yawning, yawning, I feel the nausea, feel the nausea, see that, we're out of time, look, I release the mantle to you right now in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, receive it, amen, see you next week.